Uh, Mr. Rothwell, congrats. Well, thank you. So you're in a kind of a unique position here because obviously you know what you want. You want a title shot, but do you sit around and wait or do you fight again? I'd like to see what the offer is. I'd like to see them. You know, I think they don't make decisions tonight. I mean, they look at kind of what the situation is. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Do they remake, you know, the former champ and champ? Do they take that fight still and, and, and get ready together? And then it's going to leave me in Stipe, I believe. And uh, if they want to move things around and they're ready to put me in, um, I'll go and I'll crush Verdum and I'll take his belt. If they offered you Stipe, would you do that fight with the winner getting, you know, next in line again? <laughs> like I said, I want to see what the offer, you know, I want to see what happens, you know, uh, but like I said, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I mean, the, the bottom line is, is, you know, I, I think the belt's going to come secondary because my number one priority is laying waste to this entire division. You know, and I think tonight it wasn't about dancing or laughing. It was about making a statement. I made it tonight. What can, can you point to something that, that has happened in the last four fights or so that's been kind of the difference that has got you over the hump to, to get to this point now where you're just kind of, kind of tearing through, through guys? It's a combination of things, but it's, uh, you know, You've heard me talk about it over and over again. I, I, when, I, when I moved back to Kenosha, Wisconsin, I got Rothwell MMA started, you know, having my own gym, you know, finding Luis Claudio, you see him with me, having the incredible training crew that I have with me, James Boknovic, and my whole crew of, you know, everybody's helping me at the gym, and of course, having the incredible wife that I have. Uh, I call her a unicorn because, you know, I see a lot of guys, they, they have that woman around them, and I watch, I've watched women destroy champions, so I'm, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I have a woman that's making me... Uh, better every fight and uh, I think it's I'm 34 years old and I refuse to, to be placent I'm getting better every fight I'm working on my skills at all times and after tonight I made a vow uh, I did not like the way I went into the ring um, how my body felt it's just like I said I'm constantly learning and uh, the first round was more like a warm-up and you've seen the second round I, I feel I got to watch the fight but I think the second round I think I opened up at better defense better striking obviously I was on I was ready to win, win the fight in the second round so I need to work on that because that needs to be that way the first round. And uh, I made a vow to, uh, to the universe and to uh, the world of martial arts, which is carrying me through this, that Monday I'm going to go back and uh, continue my training. I'll be ready for anything and everybody. Thank you. Brian, if I could go to you real quick. Uh, can you talk about sort of the, the, the pressure that you're under taking a fight on eight days' notice against a guy as heavily fight, uh, hyped as, as he was and kind of being pushed into a corner, so to speak, in, in terms of what people expected out of you? Uh, you know, I didn't really feel like I was pushed into a corner. Uh, I felt fine with the fight, taking it on eight days' notice. Um, <clears throat> I was training for a fight that was coming up. Um, so I've been in the gym. Even before that, I was in the gym getting ready. So uh, I knew with the short notice, it wouldn't be a factor. As you got to that position on the ground, did you feel anything from him in, in terms of panic? I mean, do you, do you sense that from him, like that, that he felt like he was in a, in a position he was very uncomfortable in and... and do you feel like he might have tapped sooner than somebody else might have? Uh, you know, uh, I was ready to keep going and doing what I was doing anyways. Uh, I felt the, that I had a tight bite on the choke, um, and I was only getting tighter. Uh, I, don't, I think I could tap anybody who I get in that position uh, if I have the right bite on it. For Ben Rothwell. Could you explain the difference between a uh, front choke and you call that a go-go? Could you tell us what the, is it a hand grip? Yeah, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to show the technique, but it was, it's obviously the hand grip because I know I, I hear people say things like 10 figures, squeezel diesel, and different variations of guillotine. It's, it's none of those. If you watch what they do with their hands, you know, Luis and I shake our head. It's just it's something very unique, and uh, I'm very proud to be representing it with Luis because, you know, Hicks and Gracie's, a renowned black belt that's who made Luis a black belt and when Hicks and Gracie goes to Luis he says show me this go-go that that's something special like we, we you know it's it's to watch Luis become a master himself and he's creating his own things that are so effective uh I feel like my submission skills are like a cheat code out there right now guys don't know what I'm doing and you think it's going to stop at the choke if the guy isn't does get his takedown it's not going to end there I have <sighs> an array of deadly skills off of my back on top wherever the fight goes i'm ready to end the fight i mean that i know a lot of people say it but i'm proving that wherever the fight goes i'm gonna end it and also for brian uh would you say that was more of an arm triangle or a von flu choke from that angle i would say arm triangle 
Question for Randy. Over here, Randy. Um, you know, it's a nice fight night, the culmination of fight week. Just talk about you know, what this whirlwind was like, fight week for you. Um, it was good. You know, it was just an experience, you know, and um, I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying the ride, you know, something new. And like I said, just enjoying the ride, man. That's it. Just a quick update for you all. Ryan Bader was transported for precautionary purposes, and Anthony Johnson is about 15 minutes away. Jim, go ahead. This is a question for Jimmy Rivera. You fought uh, and beat your toughest opponent to date. What do you want to see next standing before you in the octagon? Um, I'm hoping to fight someone in the top 10 and keep working my way up, keep climbing the ladder. Um, Yuri is an unbelievable opponent and tough opponent, so I'm hoping my next fight someone in the top 10 to keep going up. Questions, guys? This is a question for Tarek Safedin. Uh, hi, Tarek. Congrats for your win. So uh, you are back in the UFC uh, after a long layoff. And uh, do you feel okay? Do you want to fight very soon? Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while. So I'm happy to be back and get the W tonight. Um, but um, to get back soon, yeah, for sure. There, there's a, a huge card in Europe, in Rotterdam. I would love to be fighting close, as close as I can, you know, from home, so I would love to be on that card. Um, and um, other than that, I'm gonna go back to training pretty soon. Um, tonight was a, you know, I got the W, but I made a lot of mistakes, and uh, I just gotta go back to the gym and work on those mistakes. Uh, when you say you go back to the gym, which one? A TriStar. So your your choice is made, or, or do you definitely change camp, or uh, do you uh, change the gym? Definitely, or are you back to between two? Well, uh, <clears throat> I gotta go back to California. I haven't seen my kids for the past two months and a half, so I gotta spend some time with them first, and then uh, as soon as I get back to training, I'll be back in Canada. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Any other questions? Mark? Question for Ben. Um, I'm wondering, you know, on this run you've been on here, have at any point in time you've sort of felt overlooked in the division? I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I'm all about paying your dues. And I feel like I'll be surprised if I get overlooked now, because now I feel like I've paid some dues. And now you know, I've shown the world what I can do. But when I first came to the UFC, I was you know, win and lose, win and lose. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I wasn't showing what I could do, and you don't get, you know, why should you be rewarded when you're losing fights? You know, now that I put a, a string together and show that I am a contender, one of the best in the world, now we'll see. And, uh, I mean, they gave me a bonus tonight, so obviously they're noticing something, so. Uh, question for Tarek. Over here in the back. Are you able to explain why you ended up choosing TriStar as your new team, and at what point in the process, how early, how late, did you realize that, all right, I made the right choice, this is where I should be now? Well, um, I was at Team Quest for, for a long time, for eight years, and um, for the past year, year and a half, you know, I felt like I needed change. It was a personal decision. Um, nothing, no bad blood between, you know, me and the team it was just personal. Um, I felt I, I needed change in the way I train, uh, my trainers, my training partners. And so, um, why TriStar? Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't know, it's, I felt something that I needed to go there and try it out, you know, because, you know, the, you know, the head coach, Firas Zahabi, trained uh, so many great fighter, champions, contenders. And um, so I said to myself, okay, let's try it, you know. So I went there for a week, week or two, just to try it out. And then as soon as I got there, and I, I, first couple of days I trained there, and I was like, okay, that, that's where I need to be at this point of my career. And uh, they welcomed me open arms. And I felt really, really good training there and for my camps. So that's why I made the decision to go there. And I believe that you went there for that initial trial period at the same time as when uh, Sage Northcutt went there. Is that somewhat accurate? Were you there at the same time as him? Uh, as who, sorry? As Sage. Oh, uh, yes, yes. 
And so I know you're, you don't know him probably very well because he hasn't been there all that much, but you're a veteran, you've had ups and downs, you've been around this sport. Did you have a chance to say anything to him backstage as you know, a word of advice after suffering his first pro loss? Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough, but we didn't, uh, I didn't talk to him. I didn't have the chance. Uh, it's tough when you lose, and uh, you know, sometimes uh, you gotta keep, uh, you know, keep the fighter you know, still away from him a little bit because he needs some space. Um, but I'll definitely talk to him if he, if he needs me too. And just one other quick question. Was it at all weird for you to go there, considering the fact that Rory McDonald was your last fight and he's at the gym and I know you train with him now. Was that strange for you at all? No, no. Uh, you know, when I went there, uh, I met Rory and uh, we shook hands and we're professional. He's, he's a good guy, great guy, great training partners. So, uh, no, no problem at all. Dave, uh, just a quick uh, question for you. Mm -hmm. In regards of how it will pertain to Anthony Johnson, whether he's next in line for a, for a shot at uh, DC and what we're assuming is John Jones, do you guys have a statement that you can make about when that Jones and Cormier fight might take place? I know the rumored date was right. April at Madison Square Garden, but since that's looking dead in the water, do you guys have an official statement? We expect to have an announcement within the next couple of days here. Um, things are shaking out, and uh, I think you guys are going to be pleased with the outcome. And as for Anthony Johnson, Joe was already talking about plans for him. So um, as Ben said, and thank you, Ben, we usually don't make fights tonight, um, but we're going to get back to Vegas uh, Tuesday and huddle on this. Cool. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, for Jimmy, um, you worked in the, uh, a lot of the local promotions and, and this, the kind of work you did, it took several years of, of, of an unbeaten streak over a variety of opponents uh, and finally came to the promotion. You, 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 you picked up wins here in the UFC. You, you, this is the biggest win now. Were you ever discouraged at any point that you might or might not got, get a call to come into the UFC? Um, yeah, I had a couple of doubts in my head, but being a part of martial arts since I was a little kid, just keep putting my head down, keep putting my work in, what I've learned from Tiger Showman's, and uh, just kept working at it. And I said eventually I'll get the call and I'll keep doing what I love to do and uh, keep working and keep fighting. Uh, Randy, um, as far as um, uh, tonight we saw uh, Sage Norcutt uh, lose, um, and you know a lot of people even before this fight felt he was being promoted too fast or maybe he was believing a lot of the hype. Uh, how do you feel about that situation? Because, you know, you, you might be in the same uh, spot, potentially. Um, I feel like anybody can lose, you know. So, you know, we're all, we're all human. And I've, one thing with me, I don't think I'm going to let the hype get to me. You know, I'm taking it one fight at a time. And, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. So whatever they put in front of me, I'm ready, you know. And um, that's just an unfortunate situation that he had, you know. But. Uh, just another question for Randy. You, you seem very confident and not phased by it. I'm in the back here. I don't know if you see me. It's all right. Uh, yeah, there you are. Uh, it's not phased by this at all. But once you were in there in front of all these people cheering for you, you had a good crowd there for you, Bruce Buffer saying your name, all that. Did, did any of this get to you at all in the back beforehand? Did you feel butterflies? Anything? Um... The, the usual butterflies, you know, fight butterflies, not UFC butterflies, but the usual stuff. So this was just another fight for you? I um, wouldn't say this is huge for me. It's not just another fight, but as far as, you know, jitters and stuff like that and the way I felt, you know, nerves, yeah, I feel the same way all the time, you know. All, all the fights for me are big, just as big as this one, you know, but I just, I don't know, man. I just don't get, I just don't get that, that feel, you know, so I don't know. I get nervous, but... The usual stuff, the usual being nervous before the fight. But once I step in the ring, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. So. This is also for Randy over here. Um, Sage did have this big target on his back pretty quickly. Had guys calling him out. Do you expect to kind of get that same response where people really want to fight you right away? Um, I thought about it, you know, but it doesn't matter to me, you know. For me, it's like, hey, it is what it is. It's that type of thing, you know. But I'm here to fight, you know. That's what I'm. I'm not here for friends, you know. I'm just here to do do what I do. So. And you got to make your UFC debut pretty close to your hometown. How nice was that to have a crowd behind you and have people really going for you the whole time? 
that was great. You know, that was amazing. You know, the support that I had was tremendous. And, you know, I really appreciate that from everybody. Even the commission, you know, everybody that was here was so, you know, nice to me and everything. And I appreciate that. That felt really good, you know, just to see the familiar faces and everything. So, yeah. How nice would it be to actually get to fight in New York and maybe at the Garden? Or oh, man, that'll be amazing. You know, preferably the Barclays, actually. But, you know. <laughs> Uh, for Dave, yep. uh, why did you UFC cancel the event that was supposed to be in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, next March? Why did we cancel the event? Yes. So we have another pay-per-view date planned in Brazil for later in the year, but based on the fight card that we put together for business purposes, it, it made more sense to do it in Las Vegas. But our commitment to Brazil is stronger than ever. We have an event there in May with uh, Jacare and Vitor, and we're looking at a big pay-per-view card before the end of the year, too. So uh, to answer any of the the critics that say we're not committed to Brazil, it's just not true. Okay, we had some change in the last events. Are, are you expecting to have some change for the event number 200? Are we expecting to have some changes? Um, no, we're still on track. As we uh, said in our press release uh, earlier this week, there are still plans to uh, keep UFC 200 on July 9th. And over the next couple of days, as I was saying to Matt, some of this stuff's gonna shake out. Uh, question for Ben. Rothwell, over here. Um, you were trading wins and losses not that long ago. It's been a few years, but some of the guys that you'd lost to are still up there. Obviously, Cain Velasquez being one of those guys. What would you think about like avenging that fight, or you know, our loss gear? These guys, like, what would you think about those guys? What do you mean? What what I think? Would you would you like to avenge that loss? Would that appeal to you? If you if you pay attention to me, I'm pretty vocal. That you know, I've been calling out Orlowski, Kane. I'm here, to, like I said, I'm gonna say it one more time. I'm here to lay waste to the entire division. It's every guy ranked in front of me. I'm, I put a target on them. If they're gonna stand in my way from the belt, then unfortunately for them, I'm gonna crush them. So that's what I'm here to do. I was just wondering if there's extra motivation, I guess, to get those guys again, if that was presented to you instead of a title shot. <laughs> I would be lying if I said it wasn't because it was there. I had something in me, but I've never been able, of, of my nine losses, I've never been able to fight one of them again. And it was like, if I could just avenge one of them, yeah, it would be Kane. You know, I had, why? He's the, you know, for so many years, he held onto the belt and, you know, held, held a lot of guys from being able to fight for it. And, you know, I, I just, uh, I, think, I think it was worth more. Of, of my losses, he's probably the, the toughest one that's on there. It's probably worth the most, and it would probably be, mean the most to avenge that loss. And, uh, you know, I, I have a good string of uh, guys right now on my win record that are showing that I'm one of the best in the world, but I think adding Kane to it is what it's going to take to prove that I'm one of the, the very best heavyweights in the world. So hope that answers your question. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations, Rumble, $50,000. Thank you, Dan. Say, say what? $50,000. Oh, okay, thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> Caught your attention pretty quick. Good. Uh, hey, Anthony. Um, Rashad Evans had said that he didn't think that perhaps you were ready to fight Cormier. Do you agree with him? Why do you think he said that? And more importantly, do you feel ready now? Uh, probably. When did he say it? It was um, just a few weeks ago probably because I was getting ready for Ryan Bader, so I wasn't ready to fight Cormier, so I was getting ready for Bader, so he, he was right. You know, uh, Rashad knows no, how No, he I means am. when you fought him the first time. Oh, when time. I fought him the first time, I, I wasn't. I was getting ready for John Jones, not Daniel Cormier, you know. Um, I mean, it's a big difference when you're getting ready for 6'4", compared to, what is he, 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 something like that, you know, and uh, it's just, I wasn't, you know, but I still went out there and did my best. And now, you know, going into this, knowing that it's going to be Jones or Cormier, how do you feel now? And, and do you think that you have enough time to prepare for either one of them with that type of mindset, knowing that now it's flipped around? I definitely um, have enough time to get ready for whoever they put in front of me now. Um, nothing happened to me this fight. I'm not injured. So uh, I just keep going forward and see what happens. Since um, Cormier fought you the way that he did, do you think your opponent this time around thought maybe smother him and it'd be a little bit different? Were you prepared for that? Is that why you had the outcome that you had this time around? Well, I had the outcome because I trained my ass off, you know? Um, they said I was mentally weak, you know? 
I guess mentally weak people win, you know, and confident people lose. How do you feel mentally? Why do you think that they think that way? And is there something different this time around? Well, you know, when I fought Daniel, <clears throat> um, you know, I had first round was, just, was, you know, I dropped him and I came in and tried to finish him and I gassed out. And so, you know, when you're gassed and you got somebody that, you know, like Daniel Cormier on top of you, grinding on you, it can do a lot to you mentally and damn near break you. You know what I mean? And, uh... I guess they saw the one fight like that since I've been at 205 and they thought they figured me out. But uh, that was fine. They, 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 they brainwashed him to make him think that I was actually mentally weak. And that's fine with me. I, I won. Fantastic. So Congratulations. I, so to me, who, who's the weak one? Do you have a preference? This time around, what, do you want to fight Jones or just a brand new person? Well, or I get it... asked that question a lot. John and I will fight one day. You know, we have mutual respect for each other. Um, we've never talked trash about each other. Every time we see each other, we show each other love. Um, <clears throat> you know, especially with the media and everybody's hyping the fight up between him and I. You know, I was supposed to be the guy to knock him out or beat him and all that other stuff. And, you know, I think we definitely want to challenge each other and see what we're made of. We're just two guys, two alpha males like that, that are just competitive. You see him bulking up in all these videos now and all the weight training that he's doing. Do you think that's in preparation for you or DC or either one? I think John is just, he's an animal right now and he's doing whatever is best for him. I mean, if I had what, eight months or whatever, layoff like that, eight month layoff, I'd be big too. You know, he, he's got enough time to sharpen up his tools, and I think he's definitely doing that. But I think he's getting ready for the world. Thank you. Anthony, I'm about to ask you about something like, a, like an eight-month layoff, because if, if the Jones-Cormier fight takes place in, let's say, late April, we, we were told we we're going to find out in a few days. But let's say it happens in late April. Let's say it goes five rounds again, and, and you wait for the winner, and let's say that's at the end of the year. Are you comfortable waiting until the end of the yep. year for, for that fight? Yep. That's the biggest fight of my life. If they want to make me wait that long, I'd definitely do it. It gives me plenty of time to uh, get ready for whoever. So no matter what, you're waiting for the winner of that fight? I ain't going to say no matter what. Because if somebody gets hurt and they need a replacement, I'd definitely jump in if I'm healthy and able to fight. You know, that's for light, heavy, and heavy. It, does, does that give you any concern if you did wait for that long and there would be delays? Because we've seen that happen with other guys before, like... Like Rashad, for example, waited for a, for a long time for I've been out that long before. You know, I broke my hand when I was fighting for another organization. I broke my hand fighting Andre Olovsky. I was out for, excuse me, a couple of months. So it doesn't bother me at all. I, I usually come back better. In, in terms of how the fight played out, did it, I mean, he, he basically shot in eight or ten seconds. Did, did that surprise you at all, or did you think he would take his time a little bit before he would shoot? Um, there were two ways this was gonna play out. Either he was gonna play it smart and hoping that he'd catch me out of position or he was just gonna bomb rush me and try and take me down and he tried to bomb rush me and it just didn't work out, you know what I mean? So I was expecting one of two things and I, I like this game plan. Uh, Dave, um, UFC has been to Poland, mm -hmm. and uh, there's plans for a Croatian card uh, soon. Uh, what about the rest of Eastern Europe? I mean, there's a lot of Russian talent, so would you, are you guys thinking about uh, going to Russia? Yes, we're in ongoing uh, conversations about Russia, and as we say, we're taking the octagon everywhere. Uh, you know, we've got Croatia, we've got Rotterdam coming up, we've got a lot of new cities we haven't even announced yet. So uh, Russia is definitely on the radar, it's just a matter of uh, timing and when. And uh, I'm sorry, one more question. Mm -hmm. And uh, since um, legalization of uh, MMA in New York State hasn't happened yet, w what logically is the next step? I mean, there was a, a uh, I guess there was a reservation for uh, Madison Square Garden that didn't pan out for April, I believe. Uh, what else is going on? 
We're going to still work hard to get here in New York uh, and bring the UFC to Madison Square Garden, to Barclays Center, to the entire state. It's absolutely 100% a top priority for us. And uh, a couple of days ago, Lawrence Epstein, our uh, chief operating officer, and a couple of other staff, Mark Ratner, were here meeting with legislators and lobbyists. And um, we feel pretty confident that 2016 is the year. And the, uh, as Lawrence said, the next date we're targeting is November. So uh, we're committed to bring in the UFC to New York. And uh, it's also important to say we're committed to bringing the UFC back to New Jersey, too, because New Jersey's been really, really strong for us while we can't uh, bring the UFC to New York. So a lot of good stuff brewing right now. Rumble, if they offered, if they offered you a fight other than the winner of Jones DC, would you take it? Yeah, that's a paycheck. One more? <laughs> 